judge is ready whenever you are ready. I'll just, uh, I'll just let them get situated and then I'll go. So. Sure, yeah. The pleasantries will be on time because we've got another engagement. So uh, I'll keep it as fast as possible. Okay. Can I skip a few things? <laughs> Uh, judge, if it's alright with you, I'm just gonna stand right here That's so I can put my pages down. So. Opposition, are you guys ready? If not, I'll wait for you. Wonderful. And judge, you've already said you're ready, so pleasantries on time. But before we begin time, do you have any paradigms that need to be aware of? Not. Awesome. Pleasantries starting now. Judge, thank you so much for being here. Opposition, thank you for giving us someone to clash with. Thank you, partner, for giving me such great advice and information. And thank you, never mind, there's an audience. Here we go. So, <laughs> now look, this house believes that we should overturn the Indian Child Welfare Act. Now, we are we are defining overturn as remove from um, United States law, and we are defining the Indian Child Welfare Act as a federal law that governs the removal of American Indian children from their homes. Now, our judging framework is a net benefit, and we're treating this as a policy case. So we're gonna give you some things that need to be addressed. We're really gonna give you a plan for that pro those problems. We're gonna give you some advantages some harms prevented, our solvencies, and then finally, hope that we sway the judge in the favor of the government. Now, just getting started here. Number one, the, I, the IWCA is unconstitutional. Time.org, Kotob.com, both 2022. Both pundits are saying, hey look, this is an unconstitutional act for the United States law. It is segregating people based off their race, and not off the best available candidate. It is unconstitutional. Number two, it puts tribes' needs over the children's needs. Now, this is really, one of, really where I want to harp, because again, as someone who has helped through the adoption process, I don't want to be anecdotal and just put my own personal experience, but again, this is a time-bending process, this is an expensive process, and what this law allows is no matter how long you're in this process, if a tribe then chooses to take that child, no matter what process the other family has gone through, no matter how much that child wants to be with the other family, the federal government mandates that it, it, they are going to that family instead. So, what's the plan here? How are we going to enforce this? How are we going to overturn this? How are we going to change this? Very simple. We're talking about the United States. We're going through the Supreme Court. We believe this can be done in about two years. In fact, depending on how we research today, these are already being brought up right now in the Supreme Court. But through this debate and all that, let's just say it was starting from ground zero, we believe it would take around two years to do. Because again, there already is some precedent, there already is law in the books, so we don't think this is an unrealistic timetable for this to happen. How do we enforce it? Again, through the Supreme Court, that, that would then get pushed through the United States federal government. Again, I think it's very self-explanatory, this is how we would pass a federal state mandated law here. Third, staffing. I hate to be redundant. Supreme Court, again, that would, they would enforce it, they would change it, and then the federal government employees would enforce that as well. So again, all kind of self-explanatory going through here, Judge. And finally, the funding would go through normal means. Simply, the Supreme Court would just simply enact this law, whatever the average cost of a law being passed by the Supreme Court, depending on what you look at, it was kind of invariable and kind of hard to tell, and so I don't want to put a number on it, and they just criticize that. The point is, it would be, it would be funding that is already available to the Supreme Court judges. So, advantages. Obviously, less discrimination is good. And I'm not trying to make a truism here, I just think we can all agree. People not being discriminated based off their race or color is a good thing. I think we can all agree there. Again, children's, children, and again, this is the big one. Children would go to the best home for them and it would not be decided by the federal government. I think that's a huge point that we really wanna hammer home here, Judge. The federal government should not be deciding where a child should go to their home. Now obviously, I don't want to act like there's no case for any government intervention. We have law enforcement, we have those things, but this is a law that is codified by the United States Supreme Court in 1978 that has now been running through that are saying, hey look, it doesn't matter how much you've done. Again, I've already mentioned, it doesn't matter how much you've already done. If a tribe wants this child, they get the priority. And no matter how much time you put in, money you put in, you are overruled. And that is not right. We don't believe it's right. And we don't believe it's constitutional. And, and other sources that we've already listed have supported that. So again, um, also kind of talk, it would, de it would delay their placement in homes. That is a harm that we'd be preventing here. We would reduce that. They would be allowed to do these things. They would get into homes faster that want them and love them. Again, adoption can be a long process. Let's not drag this out farther than we need to. And also, um, that there are cases to be made. Um, Cato.org, 2022, April 2022, 2022 to be precise, has said that in cases where this law has been brought up, Children are going back to abusive homes 
that were the reason they were getting adopted in the first place. There was a redundancy in their governmental structure where people were going back to abusive homes. And again, we want to reduce the amount of children that are harmed by this law and <coughs> overturning it altogether. Again, I want to make sure we, we define these clearly. I, I want to make sure. Overturn, we're simply saying we're moving from law. And then again, the IWCA, we kind of define that law already. Again, so now we're getting into solvencies, and then I'll give my kind of closing remarks at the beginning here. How does our plan fix the issue at hand? By removing this law, there would be no state mandate that an Indian child would be mandated to go back to a home that in some cases they've been abused. There would also be no basis of discrimination based off their race going into a certain home or not. This would also empower people to adopt children, again, who are in need of adoption. This is not just a kidnapping situation. These are kids who already need to be adopted. These kids who already need a home to be in. So, again, running through this, our plan, Two years, we think that's about right. Again, we're kind of doing a hypothetical scenario here in this debate round. Two years, start to finish, through the Supreme Court, we think is very tenable. Supreme Court doing all these things, both enforcement, staffing, and funding through the normal means the Supreme Court already has. So again, Judge, I look at you and I say, I think this is going to create a net benefit. And I really want to hammer home that. Removing this law creates a better environment for the parents adopting them, a better environment for the children who are being adopted, less state law that is unconstitutional and discriminatory, which I think we can all agree is a good thing. Net benefit-wise, our case is far superior. And I hope you vote in favor of the government. Would you mind if they close this door? I'm sorry, I'm stuck in a corner here. You get right here, I'm sorry. so much for being here today and for giving us your time. Um, thank you, opposition or government, for giving us clash. Thank you, partner, for your help today. Um, as I begin, um, I would like to uh, say that we agree with the judging criteria of net benefits in that even if it's a 51 to 49 percent, that the benefit wins. Um, we agree with the terms that overturn would be removed from U.S. law and um, moving forward. Um, now I would like to address our points and then refute um, governments. Um, first thing we would like to address is the loss of culture. Um, what was failed to be mentioned earlier is that this um, Indian Child Welfare Act of 1978 strictly as implied, strictly as stated in the law, it only applies to abandonment cases where children are abandoned by parents, grandparents, or any um, guardian figure. So outside of that, um, if we remove this act, people can come in and just take a child away from their tribe. That provides such a loss of culture that is detrimental to, to um, moving forward. Um, it would be the same as, um, it's, if we disrupt the system we have now, it's the same as the disruption that occurred in the Trail of Tears. The, um, Indian, tri or Indian tribes put such a heavy focus on community, and when we stepped in before, we destroyed and hurt so many families and lost so many tribes and lost so much culture. By stepping in now, we are providing the same thing. If we remove this act, children are vulnerable to be taken from their grandparents, taken from their aunts, not just their parents, because if their parents surrender to an aunt or grandparent, that would be normal in this society. But if that happens in an Indian, um, tr an Indian tribe, the government, if we remove this act, the government would be able to step in and take that child away from everything that they know. Um, it's been noted from multiple sources, um, including Associated Press and BBC, that um, they have their own ecosystem, they have their own economic system, they have their own government system, their work systems, their own school systems, their own worship systems. If we take a child, out of the system, out of their tribe, out of everything they knew, we are implementing severe trauma. Because again, this act only applies to abandonment cases. And if we remove it, it would harm so many children. Um, coming from here, I would like to go refute, off, or refute government's points. Um, 
the first point you had made was that the IWCA is unconstitutional as it suggests as it segregates based on race. It's not that it segregates based on race, it's that it's taking two different defined cultures and tearing them apart. If they have a defined culture, as um, previously mentioned, the Trail of Tears, they had their own set government and ecosystems. We're destroying that, um, that uh, ties to their culture. And in that of itself, removing culture and removing the idea of culture is segregation and is detrimental um, to, their, to their culture and to their um, tribes. The second point you had made was that um, this puts tribal needs over kids' needs. That's not the case. These kids, from the time they were born until through the time they were brought up, all they know are these tribes. This is their culture. If they're taken out of that, what does that do to their mental and physical well-being? Um, Last, and I would like to continue to address your um, plan. So, um, we the two years, all of that is would work great if it were actually providing benefit to the children. And from my understanding, it's not because it's removing their entire cultural belief system. Um, your advantages were that less discrimination is good, and I agree. But how is there less discrimination if you're removing entire cultural groups? Um, secondly, um, you said the advantage would be that the child goes to the best home for them. That may not necessarily be the case because if we remove this, then that puts more children at a vulnerable risk because the IWCA strictly refers to abandonment cases and not all Indian children. Thirdly, you would said that adoption is already a long process and why make it longer? That has nothing to do, I'm not seeing the correlation with this topic. Fourth, you said that children are going back to abusive homes. Again, this is this um, this IWCA Act only applies in situations of abandonment. So it's not putting children back in abusive homes. In fact, it is taking those who don't have a home and bringing them into it. And it's providing more culture and love for them. For these reasons, we have shown that by removing this act, we, it would do nothing but to harm culture and prove segregation. And for these reasons, I not only believe that this shouldn't be taken out, but I believe it should have been put in place long before 1978 because we have seen the negative side effects from examples such as the Trail of Tears. Thank you. are two different things. When this first was enacted, there was that initial tense for abandoned children, but that's not being used nowadays. This gives placement to Native American families first. So as our partner has stated, there could have been an adoption process going along where a child with a loving foster family who wants to adopt this child, and if someone in the tribe decides like, hey, actually, yes, I would like to take that child, and they find that placement, that child is then ripped away from those foster children, families that they absolutely love and adore and are now being placed with them, extending the time to be placed into a loving home, disrupting the stability of this child's life. I would like to go through our, our first main point, which again is like, this is delaying placement in stable homes. Um, our, one of our other points was, this is sending children back to homes where they've been abused. Again, this correlates back to initial tent and actual tent within the act itself. And of course, our last point, or I guess technically our first point, was that this is unconstitutional. 
the U.S. Uh, uh, Supreme Court has stated that uh, the ICWA, which again is the Indian Child Welfare Act, is unconstitutional as it violates the commandeering doctrine, which is the 10th Amendment. And this was stated this Tuesday of this month, November 8th, 2022, uh, by the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, I also like to go through the fact that they have agreed to our plan that they said that two years seems feasible. They uh, agree that the, the enforcement and staffing seems feasible and our funding seems feasible throughout it all. So they're again, all points that flow through to us. I would like to talk about some of their other points that they have made that they said this again, only applies to abandonment, that we'd be kidnapping these child children. Again, comes to initial intent over actual intent of this law. And the actual intent of this law is that it's not just for abandoned children, but it's for any type of native children. Again, that's being removed from um, abusive situations and can be placed back into that abusive situation. They've talked about the fact that it's detrimental. It's detrimental to remove them from their culture. So, I'm take a step back, slow down a little bit on this one. By saying that, as a white fair person myself, can I only adopt white children then? If I adopt a black child or an Asian child, am I removing them from the culture? And vice versa for any other way. So are we only allowed to adopt children with our own culture? Are we only allowed to adopt children of our own culture? I'd like to make that as that refuting their point there. With the time that I have left, I would like to just again go through our main points and how these are advantages, how these are net benefits. Um, our first main point, again, this is unconstitutional. In general, having things that are unconstitutional agreed by the Supreme Court is a negative. So why would we want to keep it? Removing this would be a benefit at the end of the day. Our uh, second main point was that uh, tribes need to be put over the child's needs. By removing this, it would put the child's needs first. They'd find the best possible home for them and a loving, healthy environment that they can move into. Uh, this, again, is a net benefit. Putting children in areas that is not beneficial to them would be a net negative. Um, and our third, part, our third point was this, the delayed pace, the placement into stable homes. By allowing this process to be opened up, it would keep to the four to six month timeline that adoption does take place. Um, which again, would be a net benefit rather than dragging this out longer for these children. Um, I'd also like to use even the, the opposition's points or saying that this would be um, detrimental to their culture. Again, we're talking about segregation or uh, discrimination of allowing this to happen. If we allow this to be opened up, we're, we're taking that segregation away. We are not having this discrimination based off of ethnicity. Uh, again, that is a net benefit. And again, I'd like to reiterate the points um, that, uh, that this would be a benefit to both the families and children by allowing this to be over. Um, I would also just like to, uh, to worry at this point that my partner has made that I feel like it is super important. Uh, according to Cato.org, um, in 2022, April 2022, children are going back to these abusive homes with the ICW, ICWA, and, th and this in general would be a net negative for America as a whole. We should not be sending these children back to uh, abusive homes. Um, by overturning this, we would allow them again to find these better homes. And with all these points that I've made today, I believe you should vote in favor of the government. Thank you. being here. I'm sure we're all pleased to be here and now let's begin. So let's see. 
First, I'd like to address that they have, uh, the government has pointed out that the definitions there, everything flew to them. Well, it's a net benefits case. The fact that we're talking about what can be done is not is neither beneficial nor detrimental. It may flow through, but it's irrelevant to the net benefits discussion. And secondly, um, a lot of talk of segregation. Well. There, let's look at um, affirmative action. That is something that often based uh, that is a legal doctrine that uh, is based on race and uh, minorities. It is by nature discriminatory. Yet there, most people don't have too much of an argument against that. Um, it is very beneficial to uh, minority peoples who are trying to. Um, you're trying to get a job, trying to get education, something that has because of a systemic result of uh, American culture has provided a detriment to them that they, oh, we using that affirmative action have gone to overcome. Now, the Native Americans used to occupy, well, obviously not one tribe with them occupied, but overall they occupied the entire North American continent. And now they are relegated to different um, tribal lands, and why should we not allow them a benefit to maintain their culture when we have taken away from them so much already? We are provide, the law provides an opportunity for them to um, um, continue their culture when we have provided so much harm against it. So, and their plan um, to uh, remove this law so, uh, to benefit children is not the only way potentially to benefit children. Um, there could uh, be uh, programs to help uh, the tribal communities be more prosperous, maybe other uh, methods of making the tribes more successful. And, there being less need of these adoptions overall anyway. And on top of that, um, oops, sorry, I kind of ran off without paying attention when I was doing. So, so they have talked about this uh, benefit they want to do, helping these children, but they have ignored the harm that they are causing, this harm against the tribal culture, the tribal lands, these things that we have already done so much to harm already, and they just want to ignore the fact that for hundreds of years we have uh, harmed these native tribes, and now we're just going to get rid of one of the uh, laws that we have that is trying to protect their culture and their identity an identity that is constantly under assault because they are a diminishing population. So their solution, their benefit that they get from this is not a unique benefit. They could get it other ways. Um, okay. And our understanding of the law is provided earlier is that these apply to abandonment cases, so it's still a limited framework from which they are applying this anyway. This benefit, yes, perhaps there is a benefit to it, but it's a net benefit case, not just a, oh, there is a benefit case. Um, this is a small population that they're dealing with within a small population, and um, our position is that it is more beneficial overall maintain this uh, law and maintain the security of the tribal culture. All right, um, and the unconstitutionality of it. Well, I 
I'm honestly not too familiar with the points they brought up on it. I won't necessarily clash against the fact that there is an unconstitutional part because I do not know that. However, the overall um, concept of the law that relates to culture or race as like the uh, affirmative action does is not inherently unconstitutional. Um, we see plenty of laws that apply to these things and that are constitutional. So perhaps rather than rashly just replacing the entire law, just removing it, perhaps we should just amend the unconstitutional part. And they say that this will bring about less discrimination. Well, again, let's go to the affirmative action. Does affirmative action increase or decrease discrimination? Does protecting cultural identities increase or decrease discrimination? The fact that there may be cases where things go bad, that's going to happen with every law. Uh, we don't really have a scope of how extensive this is from government, I don't believe. And just saying there happens to be a bad thing, well, what is the extent of this bad thing? And These tribes have a strong family, um, strong family values. When there is perhaps a problem with a father or mother that can no longer take care of a child, placing it out to adoption to some inherently foreign to their culture couple is perhaps more um, traumatic to all the, uh, the rest of the family involved. Perhaps there are uncles, nephews, from Nas, grandpas, other people who have a stake in this child's life, who care for this child, who could potentially lose access to that child. And for these reasons, I would, I urge you to vote for opposition. for everybody for coming here. I realize we're on a time crunch. Again, thank you, Judge, for all the time you've given us. Thank you, opposition, and thank you, partner. Um, to begin, I would like to again reiterate that the judging criteria is net beneficial. That also means that if the harms are more significant than the benefits, that it, it needs to be ruled out. Um, I'm going to rehash what my partner said, and then I'm going to give a final closing statement. Um, the first argument from the government was segregation. Um, that this is all based on race. And if the, I believe the question that a member of government had asked earlier is, can I only adopt my race as a white person? And that's not what we were getting at. What we were simply getting at is that this is, what we we're simply getting at is that this is harming culture and because they, as I mentioned previously, they, according to Associated Press and BBC, they have their own ecosystem, their own economic system, their own government, work, school, and worship systems. They have grown up in a totally different environment where they've learned to live off of the land. And by removing this, you're not only harming the child in the tribe, or not only the tribe, but you're harming the child because you're taking away everything they grew up with. Therefore, that is segregation because I mean, you're harming a culture. Um, second point is that Native Americans have already been harmed and that the culture needs to remain. Again, we had mentioned earlier with the Trail of Tears, the white man has stepped in multiple times and has caused nothing but harm. So far, since 1978, this law has proven nothing but benefits. Why would we harm them? Why would we turn it around to an unknown harms? Um, progress. Um, Programs for more, to make more successful adoptions. Um, 
and amending the unconstitutional part. As my partner mentioned, we can amend the things that are wrong with it, but that doesn't mean we need to take it out completely. Again, when this was in, put in place, it was stated multiple times in this act that it would only applies in cases of abandonment. So if there are things that are wrong with it, we can amend it, but that doesn't mean we need to take it out because this is protecting an entire culture. And if we take that out, the harms are unfathomable. Again, I'm going to just kind of reiterate our facts. We will be losing culture. The loss of culture is significant in any regards. And it, um, as mentioned before, segregation is unconstitutional. But is that not what we're doing by removing this act? Is we're putting an entire culture in danger? Maybe it's not segregation, but it's harming one culture, which is close enough. It's based on race, and that is still unconstitutional. Um, as my partner mentioned, this law protects those who protects the extended family, which protects the culture and protects the child. Just because a parent is a bad influence doesn't mean an aunt, an uncle, a niece, a nephew, or a grandparent is a bad influence. Just as in, um, just as in any other situation, just because um, the parents are harmful doesn't mean the extended family isn't. And the, again, the benefit of the, the child's well-being is our focus. And the focus of this is by removing them from their culture, as stated multiple times before, it has terrible impacts on their mental well-being. Again, they grew up knowing one ecosystem, one economic system, one government, one work, one school, and one worship system. And by ripping them out of that, you are creating an uncertain future. Again, this has been implemented by DC and the Associated Press on multiple occasions. So again, I propose to you that the harms of removing this are much greater than they are of keeping it. For these reasons, I encourage that we keep the ICWA in place. Thank you. All right, Judge, are we ready? I would ask them if they don't have anything else down or not, so let's just get it going. All right. Again, blanket of pleasantries and thanks to everybody who's in here, Judge, especially. Thank you for giving us some time. However, I've had a lot to respond to. I've got five minutes to do it, so I'm going to jump right in. I hope you don't mind the curtains. I'm just going to run straight in here. First off, quote, straight from opposition about two minutes ago. Benefit of the child is the focus. So let's run through with this. If this is where we're headed, this is where our mindset is, let's look at policy cases side by side. Let's see what lines up. First, I have a question to pause to the judge before we continue with the rest of our stuff. If only benefit has been gained through this law, then why is the right now, as my partner's already mentioned, not in information, why is the Supreme Court challenging it? There has to be some sort of reason, a plausible, plausible reason. And again, Another point I would like to make that was mentioned by them saying that they would be lost from their culture, again, me as someone who looks like this will not commentate on Indian culture. That's not right for me to do. However, I will say there is zero guarantee that the child that is being ripped from another family's hands through the adoption process has lived and grown up in an Indian tribe and gotten that culture. The only beneficial standpoint and the only area that they're looking at is if their blood and their lineage and their skin color. They are doing it based off of what they're related to, not the culture itself. That is a distinction that needs to be made. This is not a 100%. They were in an Indian tribe, then something happened. Abandonment issues, we had sources say that wasn't abandonment issues. Whatever it may be, whatever you decide, Judge, they have, it is not guaranteed that they've always lived in a tribe and keeping that culture. So again, while the culture point may be valid in some instances, again, my, my partner posited a fantastic question that was not answered by the opposition. Does this mean that only white families should adopt white children? Or why are, why are white families allowed to adopt black children, Asian children, Latino children? And the list goes on. Why is say one policy, one stop shop? This is discrimination by definition. And again, kind of talking about the affirmative action point, you cannot possibly say that no one is arguing that affirmative action is not racist. That is, a truest, that is an altruistic statement and cannot be refuted. Again, depending on who you ask, affirmative action is incredibly racist. This, it is an opinion. This is a policy case. We're not talking about affirmative action. We're talking about a specific law that was passed and being talked about right now, and I don't think it really applies to what we're talking about today. So, moving through here. While the past is terrible, 
we should not simply discriminate based off of the past. And I would also like to put, again, this is the benefit of the child. The benefit of the child is the focus. So judge, now we're talking about net benefit, the greater good for this child in particular, the greater good for the United States as a whole. If the IWCA is unconstitutional, which they have said it might be, and we just need to amend some things, if we amended this, this law, which simply separates them based off of their color of being Indian, the whole thing is done. I mean, if, if you amend that, then the law is not to cease to exist. The law is very simple. You go to another tribe over priority of other, other families adopting you if you are that color. If you amend that at all, it is no longer that law. I mean, simply put, you can amend a large law with a, lot of, a, a large bill with a lot of things, but if you amend this, then the whole law is done, and we win the policy case because we should have just had it overturned to begin with. So the amendment point, not very valid in my opinion. And again, it is unconstitutional. It is segregating you based off your race. And again, no policy, like my judges said, has said otherwise that other families of other skin colors cannot adopt other children. It is this specific thing for American Indian children. Secondly, this puts the tribe's needs over the children themselves. Again, a point that was not contested by our opponents is that these children, in cases, more than one or else we wouldn't have talked about and brought up in a source, are being sent back to abusive homes. This is a 2022 number, not a 1978 number. Also, this delays their placement in a home to begin with, which is another point that was not necessarily contested either. So, when they haven't necessarily contested our timeline, the Supreme Court running it through, the two-year part, they were saying simply the intent of it maybe, but again, I think I've answered to the intent of this very well. So the plan rolls through, which I do think is important. They've accepted our definitions, which I do think is important. And we've talked about how all their criticisms of this are simply either helping us or not valid to the argument that we're having here. I think we've made it clear. So our voters, if the benefit of the child is the focus, like our opposition has said, we believe that our policy creates the greater good for this child, for these children. But if we're just talking about the United States as a whole, we also think removing unconstitutional racist laws is a net benefit to the United States. We also think that putting children's needs first, which the opposition said it was, which is what this policy would do, which is what we would do with this law being removed and overturned, we believe that the net benefit will be greater for the children. So the net benefit is greater for the children, the net benefit is greater for the United States, and I believe it would be greater for even the culture itself. Because again, there's no, there's not, there's no way of saying that the child won't share the culture with the, adopt, with the, with the family that's been adopted and that culture spreads. There is, no, there is no room for leniency and there's no room for growth here. It is simply, if they're adopted by somebody who's not an American Indian, it's dead. If they are, it somehow thrives. There's no room for any type of humanity in here. That's why this policy should be removed. The best family for the best kid should be the policy. And with that, we hope you vote in favor of the government. Thank you both. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Well done, guys.